So in this video, I'm going to review the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Now, this is my first personal Lenovo device ever. I used to use the ones back in high school. I think it was the ThinkPads and they had like the red nub in the middle. Um, but I wanted to give my fair share of using the IdeaPad 3 and give you guys my overall review and thoughts on this laptop. So let's talk about build quality first. So the build quality isn't terrible. I would say it's adequate for most people. The way I would describe it is it looks premium from a distance and a friend actually must took this on the desk for being like a $700 laptop. But when you start touching it, and for one, it's like a fingerprint magnet as well. Um, once you start touching it, it feels like a plastic surface. Um, I will admit though, I like the minimalist and simplistic design that came out really weird. I like the minimal and simplistic design. And for the first time ever, at least for me, this is the first time I've seen a company logo be off to the side instead of, instead of being directly in the middle right here. So I really like how Lenovo put the logo on the side and also inside the laptop as well. Now I wanna talk about the display. And first and foremost, this is a 15.6 inch display. And quite honestly, this display straight up sucks. Um, so when I was using this machine, I was trying to convince myself that most people probably wouldn't care about it and it would be okay at this price point. But quite honestly, this is not acceptable on any brand new laptop in 2021, especially when the display is 15 and a half inches. At a bare minimum, it should be full HD or 1920 by 1080. And you can make the argument that I'm just used to 1080, 4K or ultra wide screens, but the reality is I've used this exact same display throughout high school and college. And yes, it is doable to do work, but it's 2021 now. And it also got to a point in college where I hated doing work on my laptop because everything was just so crammed due to the resolution and looked so grainy that I would rather just go to the library or just go to the iMac or hook this up to an external display. That's how bad this display was as time went on. So now I wanna talk about the brightness real quick. So the brightness, if I can turn it all the way up, it's on max right now. It might look like you can see it on screen, probably not, not really. This is on max brightness and it is painfully low and it's painfully hard to use this thing near any type of natural light. Even when the brightness is all the way up, you really have to find the best angle, but not really. You really, it, it just sucks using this outside, period. Um, overall, like in terms of the display, I'm beating a dead ho horse at this point, but this display sucks. So let's just move on to the next category. So unlocking methods, we just have one. So you can either use your pin or a password. Basically you have to use the keyboard. There's no facial recognition with Windows Hello and there's no fingerprint sensor, but I'm not surprised given its price point at around 370 when I picked it up. Um, so moving on to the port selection as well. So we have three USB-A ports, two of which being 3.2, um, and then the regular one is just a USB 2.0 port an HDMI, and then on the other side, we have a SD card slot and a headphone jack. So I would say the port selection is solid, and I really like the choices that Lenovo made here with the ports. Um, so moving on to the speakers. So the speakers are excellent and surprisingly much better than what I expected at this price point. The camera is good enough it's nice and it has a built-in blocker as well. So you don't have to worry about putting a post-it note on your laptop, but I guess it gives your laptop a little bit of character, I would say, putting a post-it note up here. Um, so for around $370 with the microphone, camera, and speakers, I would say these are 100% acceptable. Take a look. All right, so this is the camera and microphone quality of the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. You guys can tell me how it looks and sounds. Um, I think this is pretty much what $1,000 laptops look like anyway, but in terms of like the white balance, it's it's not up to par, but I think most people are going to be okay looking at you if you have decent sun, sunlight. Other than that, this laptop camera is, for the price, it's acceptable. This quality on a $1,000 laptop, not acceptable though. <laughs> Um, 
So let's talk about where this laptop excels and it's the keyboard. Now, despite this laptop being $370, this is the best keyboard I've ever typed on on a laptop. If I would have to give it a rating, I would give this keyboard an eight out of 10. The typing, I would give a 10 out of 10, but in itself, the keyboard overall, it's an eight out of 10. And so the reason why I'm giving it an eight out of 10 is because I'm not a fan of the arrow keys and the numpad being so squished that at this point, I wouldn't even bother putting them on the laptop itself, but they're there nonetheless. And another reason why I'm docking it a point is because there is no backlit functionality. Um, that's a deal breaker for me nowadays. And even in college, when I had a laptop similar to this, working at night was such a pain despite having the keyboard memorized. I really do feel like a backlit should be a standard on any new laptop these days because people do tend to work into the night. Um, but I rarely give things a 10 out of 10 and the typing experience on this laptop is a solid 10 out of 10 and I would die on that rock because the typing experience, I don't know what Lenovo did for their keyboard or their keycaps, key travel, it's like perfection, it really is. If I could take this keyboard experience and put it on my MacBook, that would be the dream. Like the Magic Keyboard, trust me, it's a great keyboard, but when you're up against this, I don't wanna say it's a league of its own, but this is definitely a better typing experience for sure. So now that I'm done talking about the keyboard, let's talk about the trackpad a little bit. Um, so it's great, I have no complaints here in this category. Somehow this trackpad managed to impress me more than the Dell XPS, but quite honestly, with Dell laptops, the bar is pretty low over there as it is. So I'm gonna graze over the specs real quick. So this has an i3 10th gen chip, so it's all right for most things, but don't expect to play like Apex Legends or anything like that. But if you enjoy games like Minecraft, you'll enjoy this laptop. Um, the upgradability on this laptop as well, so the SSD is upgradable um, with an extra slot for a two and a half inch drive. Wi-Fi is upgradable as well, and the battery if you wanna replace that. Um, speaking about battery, battery life sucks on this as well. At most, I was getting like two and a half to four hours at most before the computer set itself to power saving mode, which at that point just made the computer painfully slow. So I highly recommend taking the charger with you if you plan on going somewhere with this laptop for extended durations. So everything about this laptop is amazing in all the categories I cover, except for the screen and the battery life. And I'll let the battery life slide because I feel like most people take their chargers with them anyway, just in case. So I usually don't harp on displays and screens too much, but this display really does hold back this laptop. The combination of the resolution and the extremely low brightness makes me want to stop using this after about 10 minutes. And then when I start typing on it using the trackpad, I kind of stop caring about the display. But it's that initial time when I open up the lid and I'm like, wow, this display somehow looks worse every time I use it. But with most things in life, once you adjust to it, you'll get used to it. Um, after about a week of looking at this display and using it, I kind of forgot how bad it was until I went to something much nicer, but this still doesn't, excuse me, this still doesn't give Lenovo the right to ship a 15 inch, 15 and a half inch screen with a sub 1080 panel. And I know people really, it gets to a point where it's like, do, should you really care about having a HD display? And I would say if this was a 13 inch laptop, I would somehow give it a pass. But since this is 15 inches, it's wider, you really do see the pixels and it, it does hurt looking at this laptop if you're looking at this for extended periods of time. So should you buy it? Honestly, I would say no. With this display in good faith, I can't recommend this machine unless you are seriously on a budget or you're giving it to your kid or something because this laptop is good enough for them. Um, but this laptop, <laughs> for me, it really does hurt my eyes, though I'm done whining about the display because it's annoying me at this point. But for white, for white, <laughs> for light workloads and office stuff, it's okay. But anything else, I would completely avoid this laptop. Um, so with all that being said, guys, hopefully you found this video informative. I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love. This display sucks. Last time I'm going to say it. <laughs>